Hello and welcome to this, the final episode of the Bike Lane in our first year. So thanks to all of you who have been watching and we have got a big show installed. I'm Matt Keenan, joined as always by a bloke that just won the one Olympic Games gold medal, Scott McGoring. Hi, welcome mate. on board. Wade Wallace, former ice hockey champion from Canada. Now Mr Cycling Tips. Champion, there was no champion. I won't, <laughs> I won't take credit for that. Well, staying upright, staying upright on ice yeah, skates. I, I could do a body check. Pretty, pretty impressive. Big show ahead. Absolutely. Look, we hear your questions to Jared Chiolik from uh, the winner of Milan Sun Remat. That's going to be great. What a fantastic event that was this year. So many of the questions about why on earth did you get out of the bus? It was so cold. <laughs> and Wade. What's on your mind this week? We have uh, we talk about what the sport is doing to get juniors into the sport of cycling. Yeah, that was courtesy of Jules. So we're answering that question. We take a close look at it. Plus, I'm delighted to say, courtesy of Scott Bikes, we've got Robbie McEwen on the hot lap to see how Scott McGorry goes at the end of this one. Position at the top of the leaderboard might be a little bit tentative. Nonetheless, we've also got the healthy living tips brought to you by health.com.au and Dr Mitch Anderson gives us a few pointers on what to do post-crash, dealing with some gravel rash. And then we also take a look at what we're looking forward to in 2014. One thing though that has caught my attention the last week or so has been the celebrations team. The NRS squad, not many results to speak of in 2013, but they put the invitation out to Sammy Sanchez, the Olympic champion from Beijing, to join their squad. I've got my take on this, but I want to hear from the PR man, Mr. Cycling Tips Way. What do you think about that? With my media hat on, you know, I, they have no results to speak of. They didn't capture my interest whatsoever. But then the first press release came out. I thought, oh, I just sort of, you know, passed it off. And then as the videos started coming out and future press releases and stuff, I kind of thought it was clever because now they're on my radar. We're talking about it. Yeah, we, we are, haven't yeah. spoken about them all year long. Yeah. And it's got coverage in the Spanish press. The Hugh and Genesis team that won the National Road Series, they weren't spoken about in the Spanish media. No. And look, I went to a lot of the National Road Series races this year. I didn't even know about the team, to be honest, yeah. until I saw the video. So what's your take? Well, look, it's great publicity. I, I get that. And it's funny, it's cheeky, and, uh, and I compliment them on that. But I can't help but take Sammy's side and think, what's it like for him to be offered a position like that as a joke? Yeah. Olympic champion, you know, he's a guru of the sport, yet they're offering him free entries and, uh, and all the power bars he can eat. Yeah, I think oh, he'd I see the funny side. I hope he, he would, would, but I could, I could see if he got a little bit offended by if it. If he doesn't see the funny side, he takes himself too seriously. That's my view. I thought celebrations, congratulations, cheeky move. You got plenty of coverage. If you haven't seen it, it's worth going on YouTube and having a look at their invitation to Sammy Sanchez. Well, from the Olympic Games gold medalist from Beijing, we head across to South Africa for the MTM Quebecer team. And your questions are put to the winner of this year's Milan San Remo. Any questions for Gerhard? Here's Mr. Cholik answering your questions. Gerald Surley, thanks so much for talking to us. First question is from a guy called Mark Sturmer. When you are surrounded by suffering but feel not as bad, are you the hammer or the nail? I guess it's the right thing to wait for the right moment and then to be the hammer. Huh? Milan and Remo sprinting against Cancellara and Sagan. What were your tactics in the final? Yeah, it was a really clear tactic. I want to be first on the line. And 500 meters to go. What are you thinking? Just wait for the right moment? Yeah, I mean, then it's more about like don't start to sprint too early and um, get in the right spot. You just I think it's more about reacting, not about thinking too much. And then someone wants to know if you went into the race knowing you could win it or did you just find yourself in the right spot and you went, ooh, maybe I can win this? No, I mean, for sure I was, was kind of an underdog for this race, but um, it also wasn't like I came there by, by like, accidental, you know? So it was that we planned to do good in this race. It was a big focus on this race. And yeah, my personal goal was to, whatever, finish top 10 or maybe there was a possibility to end up in the top five and yeah then we went home with a victory which was great was Milan and Remo cold enough for you yeah you know I do a lot of training on the skis and sometimes when you climb up the mountain and you have to change clothes on the top like uh, get dry underwear or whatever and you're standing there up on the climb with minus 20 degrees and a naked upper body that that really feels comfortable actually <laughs> Was there a culture shock going from Quick Step to Team MT in Quebec? It's a different culture. I mean, sure, we are a multi culture team, but um, I wouldn't say it was a shock. It was, yeah. I just found uh, a nice, nice environment in this team, and I really, yeah, 
enjoy it. Do you have the feeling back in your fingers yet? Yes, I got it. I got it back in the bus. <laughs> Did you or the team consider pulling out of Milan San Remo during the race when there was the break? No, at no point. I mean, um, we got to Milan San Remo, San Remo with a wild card and it was a great honor for us to start there. And um, yeah, if you, get, if you get the possibility to start in a race like that as a pro Conti team, you, you don't think about dropping out from that race. What did you do on the bus during the break? Yeah, first um, get the feeling back in the fingers and <laughs> then uh, try to eat a little bit, have a warm drink and you know, try to stay focused for the restart. I mean, that was the most important thing. It was, sure, you have to rest a little bit, but on the other hand, uh, yeah, you have to get refocused. What are your big goals for your time with Team MT in Quebec? Yeah, the whole team is moving one more step forward and um, it's great to be part of it and if we get the possibility to start in a grand tour next year then uh, yeah that would be my big goal for next year and also a big goal for the whole team cream to chamois or direct sorry <laughs> thoughts on wonder returning to world tour level for you no, no, no. I'm in my contract. I can never get out of that, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, does De Luca deserve a lifetime ban? Yeah, I think um, positive doping test, and if you didn't learn from it once, then uh, yeah, for sure. What do you think your chances are for Milano San Remo in 2014? The organization put in uh, another climb before the f or in the final, so that doesn't really make it easier for for fat sprinters like me <laughs> but um, yeah we still go to the race motivated and if we want if we go there we go for a good result so um, I didn't see the climb yet so I can't say very really much which uh, current or former teammate of yours spends the most time doing their hair oh that's difficult to say um, oh, <laughs> Linus <laughs> Linus <laughs> <laughs> Many. Oh, Andy spends a lot of time, yeah, for sure. But it, big competition mm, between Andy and Linus. Yeah, but Linus is more drying his hair, you know, and Andy's putting gel, and that's a big difference, actually. Well, what was your relationship like with Mark Cavendish when you were part of his lead-out train? For me, he's a he's a good guy and a great cyclist, and I think there was um, big respect on both sides. So I had always a good relationship with him, yeah. Are you the secret pro? The what? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, Cholik's had an interesting career. He burst onto the scene. He won a German title ahead of Zabel when he was still about 19 years of age, under 23 world champion, huge expectations, and didn't deliver until he was on a pro continental team. To a step back. It's amazing, mm. wasn't it? It was. Look, and I was living in Germany when he was uh, first signed up, and he won that German title. It was a big deal over there. The fact that he beat this all-conquering telecom team that mm. just took you know the, the German title every year. So he was the youngest ever to win that German title. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. he's he's really really good. So he's always had the ability. I'm not sure exactly why things didn't quite go the way they should have for him. But hey, he's won Milan San Remo now. So yeah, it's a nice CV. No matter what happens now, it's a nice CV. Mm. So let's deal with what's on your mind. This is What's On Your Mind and today we're discussing what's on the mind of Jules who's posted the question, how do we get more juniors into the sport? You're at the sharp end of this and Wade, you probably look more at the masters well, as they're the people who read, they're the people who read cycling tips, I, well, probably I'm more so than juniors. Probably the sharp end of fatherhood so this yeah. is something I'm starting to think about now for the first time and my answer would be the most obvious is BMX. BMX I think would be fun for kids, it sort of shows them racing dynamics, um, it wasn't about a crash, I'm sure. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I wish I could do it. Well, Dave posted that on your site. He said that BMX has been the path for so many of our champions. Mm. McEwen is the prime example. Graham Brown is another one. Yeah. It is a good path because it's fun, and that's the key. And they start really young as well. They start, seem to start uh, quite young with national championships in BMX compared to other you know, cycling disciplines. So I think it is a really good one. Plus the skills that you gain from it are fantastic. And there's also something that's been going for three years now on track cycling, which is the National Junior Track Series. That's great. It's mm. really good. They're capping the numbers now because they're getting so many young kids coming through. And it's under 15s and under 17 category. 
But the big disconnect is from 17 to 19. There's a That's massive drop off. Yeah, yeah, we're really losing them. So the clubs are doing a great job with some of the J Cycle introduction um, programs, put them into the national series, which is great. And then they just seem to fall away after that. So there's something that needs to be worked on there. There's a big challenge here for Cycling Australia. The last three or four years, their numbers have been improving by about 10% each year for the juniors from under 19s all the way down. But now that BMX, mountain bike, track and road are all under the same banner, they need to really harness that. And because you look at other sports like football with Auskick, Milo Cricket, there's the super shots for the tennis, they get those young kids in. And for a sport like cycling that's not on the mainstream TV that often, and it's not on a PE program at school, it's a real challenge. Mm -hmm. And David Paradise, who was a sponsor of the New South Wales Grand Prix, he got a lot of money, David Paradise. The financial review said dividends for his business are $33 million this year. His son goes to King's College in Sydney. He wanted his son to have the option of doing bikes at school, built them a, a mountain bike track and got Cadell Evans to come up and teach him how to ride mountain bikes. Not every school gets to do that. <laughs> so if you've got that money, you can do it. Yeah. But the other disconnect that I've noticed from when I started racing, and I came through a, school, a, a program, it was up at Lavington, um, Aubrey. Is that That's the Ergo program, the one that you just started on the Ergo yeah, from Ergo. four years old? Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, <laughs> I love my parents. But what I also had was the masters, or the veterans as they were back then. They were still part of the club, and the kids would be at the velodrome with the masters, and there'd be this real crossover of experience. But the masters, or the, the veterans now, the masters seem to be really disconnected and actually off doing their own thing, their own racing all the time. So that's another little thing that I've seen that's disappeared from, from the sport. And the hurdle as a parent, safety on the roads. Mm. That's going to be a concern. Yeah, like I have a hard enough time letting my wife go on the roads, yeah. right? And never mind you know, a kid, I'd be honestly quite scared at that. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the biggest challenges for the sport. So Jules, the sport is making progress. BMX is absolutely critical. Likewise, mountain bike, because you've got to really keep the fun in it. And Cycling Australia are doing a good job with initiatives like the track program for the juniors, the junior series. So let's see where it goes and let's hope that it grows. Next up, health.com.au healthy living tips. Well, after last week, Robbie McEwen gave us his cornering tips. Um, hopefully, not too many of you touched down during the week, but look, he did say it's inevitable, so we've got Dr Mitch Anderson on to talk about dressing wounds quite appropriately after Robbie, telling everybody they have to touch down to, to show that they're actually trying hard enough. Absolutely, Scott. Um, there's only two types of cyclists, those who have crashed and those who are about to crash. So <laughs> I'm not looking forward to the next one that happens. Ooh, okay, so someone's crashed. They've got a lot of road rash. What are we going to do? What's the first thing well, you should do? Obviously, go home first. <laughs> Chances are, if you don't need to go to the hospital, um, most people can actually get a first aid kit and then dress the wounds at home themselves. Obviously, if you've broken a bone or you suspect you have, go to the hospital. Mm. Call triple O. But in your kit bag at home, I think I've brought a whole bunch of stuff today that I thought I think people should have. Number one, betadine. Mm. You have to make sure that you're not going to get an infection. So wash it off with a lot of water and also spray it with some betadine. Then use your gauze. Fantastic stuff. Clean surgical gauze. You can get it from any, all these things you can get from the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. um, use some what, gauze. What about in the shower, the old scrubbing down to get all of the well, things, the, the, the gauze wire actually, brush, these sorts of yeah, things? Yeah, look, if it's got a lot of bitumen in it, yeah. you actually may have to go to the hospital. So if it's deep, you might need to get it scrubbed out properly, mm. surgically. Um, that happened to my face once. Oh, it didn't help me. <laughs> um, but this stuff is actually really good for scrubbing too. So you don't need a scrubbing brush. You can just rub really hard with this. Um, try and keep things clean by using some rubber gloves, which is critical. You know, you need, some, you need to keep the, the actual wound clean and get someone to help you as well, it can be useful. Uh, I think that um, dressing afterwards, you can either use some pawpaw ointment, which is fantastic stuff. It's great stuff. It provides a barrier against infection and also, um, keep, keep, so it keeps the bugs out and also keeps the juices in. Um, so all the mediators that are leaking out of the wound actually are good for healing the wound, that's why they're there. So don't rub everything off every day. A clean dressing though is good, so changing your dressing every day can be very helpful. Uh, I really favour this stuff, Fixamol. Um, it's a low allergenic, a hypoallergenic, uh, so a low reactive type dressing that sticks onto the wound, but it won't stick if you put the pawpaw ointment on it first. So get the pawpaw ointment on, it won't stick to the wound, but it'll stick around the wound, which is what you want. So that's also crucial when it's under clothing. Like if it's exposed on a knee or something, but if it's a hip, then it's going to get a lot of seepage, isn't it? So you've got to try and sure. keep that covered as much as Look, possible. Just be wary about using these tegaderms. They're just, essentially, they're glad wrap. And so they just stick on the wound and you get lots of seepage out of it. I really favour the hypoallergenic tape, fix them all, it's called. Get that from the chemist. Make sure you have a pair of scissors and some brown tape in your kit too, as well as some band-aids. 
Now, what about going out riding the next day? You've had a crash, you've got a lot of road rash. Should you keep training or should you take a little bit of time, depending on, I guess, the, the intensity of the injury? Look, any time you, you cut your skin, you're immunocompromised. So your immune system is fighting against the infection that is potentially there. So give yourself a few days, especially don't get in the pool, but give yourself a few days off the bike. Okay. Best to rest it up. All right, so got your kit at home ready. Perhaps before you actually do listen to Robin McEwen's cornering tips, get yourself a kit just in case you do touch down. Thanks to health.com.au for another healthy living tips and also thanks to Dr Mitch Anderson. A bit like insurance, advice we hope you never have to use, but just in case you do, it's worth following. We're now going to take a look at what we're looking forward to in 2014. And gentlemen, we're joined by Beck DiCello to give us the view on what to look forward to in women's cycling. Well, the best thing is, is that we've got a highlights package for every World Cup for next year, which is fantastic. Mm. It's guaranteed exposure, obviously, through television. So um, that's a big listen. step up. It is, yes, fantastic. So, so we get to see just how good Mariana Voss is. Can anybody beat it? That's another thing. That's another question. She's yeah. She was just so dominant uh, throughout uh, 2013. So it'll be interesting to see what does happen. Uh, but it could be the Marion mm. Voss show. But don't forget, she's got a lot of um, helpers in her team as well that actually support her, whether she's riding for the Dutch national team or her pro team as well. So it's not just Marianne that does do the work, but she's able to finish it off. Who, who are some of the, the ladies that might challenge her? And look, Tiff Cromwell's got a change of teams next year to... Uh, to Lululemon specialised, so mm -hmm. will she be able to step up and maybe challenge? Well, hopefully she can. I mean, she, she did mm. well this year, didn't she? So hopefully we'd, we'd like to see Tiff Cromwell. And we've even seen that Peter Mullins has signed with Wiggle Honda uh, for next year as well. Yeah. So she's such a talent and uh, is able to, to basically do anything. So I like, I'm looking forward to seeing how she goes too. And the National Road Series 2013 was brilliant. Mm. Garfoot versus Corset was rivalry. The fingernails were out. Can we match it in 2014? Oh, I think so. There's you so, hope so. I, no, I think so, definitely. 2014. It's such strong competition. The, the females race aggressively mm. and they all want to, want to win just as much as everybody else. We've got um, some great sponsors on board too to support the teams too. So there's more mm. money involved and everything. So definitely, I'm looking forward to the NR, in NRS definitely for next year. And then Anna Mears at the Commonwealth Games. Mm. Brilliant. Just broke a world record yeah. over in Mexico as well, at altitude of course, mm -hmm. and, uh, and second in the in the sprint. But she had a time off as well, so she's going to be someone that I'm looking forward yeah. to, to seeing in this new build up to Commonwealth Games and then of course the Olympics after that. She's oh, 30 definitely. and she's a second faster than she was when she was 20. Isn't that amazing? She's not slowing down. Wade, what are you looking forward to? My favourite race of the year, the two are down under. My favourite race to be at. Not, not, not to watch, but I can't. Because it's cost effective. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to move around. You, it's the you get most riding of the year in. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to watching Dre Pack through the Tour Down Under, sort of in their debut as a pro Conti team, and then throughout the rest of the season, um, and and what races they might actually get invited to. It's their grand final, isn't it? At the it start is. of the season, it's yeah. their grand final. It's huge yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and of course the Spring Classics too. I can't wait for the Spring Classics and I'm actually going to go there again this year, which yeah, I'm pretty pumped about yeah, as well. I'm sure you are. Yeah. Scott? Well, the, the Classics for me, for sure. Look, I want to see Fabian Cancellara versus Tom Boonen because we've really missed that battle the last couple of years because of injury, and Peter Sagan. I want to see those three go head-to-head -head in the Classics. I want to see if Sagan can win a Classic. Well, we, we speak about him as if he has won one, but he hasn't yet, has he? Can he? Yeah. What do you think? I think so. Yeah, He's so definitely got the uh, the capability to do it and all the, the mental toughness to and do it as well. And then bring him back to Noosa <laughs> and see if he can beat exactly. Robbie McEwen. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. But the other one for me that I'm looking forward to is the Giro. I want to see Richie Port mm. versus Cadell Evans versus the rest yeah. of the world. That's it could have an Australian saying. one tour to Grand Tour. Oh. That will be exceptional. What I'm looking forward to is very much an Australian flavour. What can Adrian Anderson and Jerry Ryan mm. do with Cycling Australia? It's complete home ground bias. For those of you who are watching overseas, Jerry Ryan, new president of Cycling Australia. Adrian Anderson has taken over as the CEO. Let's hope they can get the ship right back online because we've got so much happening in Australian cycling that is really good. Look, and they'll be working very closely with Tracy Gordry as well from the women's yeah. angle. And she's not just looking there for the women, but she's doing a great job already. Yeah, oh, yeah definitely. I think um, with those three people leading us for, for next year and beyond, at least we're moving forward and uh, we're getting put in good stead to be able to make changes and, and develop our Cycling Australia and our culture. Thanks to you for joining us throughout the year, filling in a few times. and. Good luck with the, <laughs> the arrival of bub number one. Yes, thank you. My pleasure. All the best. So next up, thanks to Scott Bikes, we head out onto the hot lap and we try and beat Scott McGrory.
final edition of the hot lap in this season of the bike lane and we've pulled out all stocks to get the better of Scott McGorry. 12 stages at the Giro d'Italia, 12 at the Tour de France and three green jerseys. Robbie McEwen, thank you and please, can you beat Scott McGrory? Well, to the first one, uh, I don't know if you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if I can beat Scott McGrory's time. I mean, the old track legend is still harboured in there deep inside and I think he pulled him out for that hot lap. I've never done a hot lap, so... Well, normally at this unknown. point, normally at this point, Robert, we ask the rider, are you nervous? Well, Scott, are you nervous? Very. <laughs> Absolutely, I am. I am, uh, yeah, I might have to change my jocks after this one. But uh, look, obviously the pedigree is there. We know what you've just come, come with some of those results, but it's recent form as well. You know, we got the better of Peter Sagan and Lee Howard yeah. at so Noosa. So these are his disclaimers in case you yeah. beat him. Yeah, what absolutely. do you think, Wade? I, I, it's a fast day. There's a bit of a there's a bit of a wind, but not as much as sky. It's a perfect day, isn't it? For track as this surface. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Robbie, you ready to roll? I guess so. I've got the stopwatch ready. It's a new stopwatch, Scott. It might be faster than the old one. Robbie McEwen in five, four, three, two, one. Away. Let's go. Go. Hey, oh, you see that clicking? Right away. That, that was, was the fastest that was a quick... of yeah. anyone. He's up and running pretty quick. Are you genuinely nervous? Oh, he he took course. your line too, Scott. Yeah, he he's took cut your the inside line. Yeah. He's already two seconds up because that, that click in, that was by yeah. far the quickest we've seen. And normally, our producer, Wilf, he's pretty keen to get the hot lap started. He doesn't waste too much time. He kept offering Robbie time to warm up more. Yeah, what's I with think that? Wilf what wants you that? to be beaten. Mm, I think he does too. No, yeah. The world does. Yeah. This Robbie, could be the end uh, of your relationship with Wilf Sweetland. <laughs> and, and Robbie McEwen. And Robbie McEwen. I can hear the so. motorbike down the back straight. It's revving I'm really hard. I'm thinking a minute 12. A minute Just 12. A minute 12 is my prediction. So it's 118.1 no. is the time that McEwen needs to get. He's only been out there for 45 seconds. Well, he should beat it. You know, come on, seriously. He's only just recently retired. He raced at Noosa Criterium. He won there. This is, this is my tour. disclaimer. I'm yeah, getting yeah, going yeah. with this. I was How long have you been seven retired years. for? Seven, seven years. Seven years before I did it. How many ergo sessions? And how many bottles of two, beetroot juice? Two or three. Yeah, beetroot <laughs> juice. Remember the healthy living tips with the beetroot That's juice? That's what I forgot before mine. I oh, we can see. Him. This uh, is going to be close. Uh -oh. oh, my goodness. In fact, close. I think he's going to pull your pants down. He's got 10 seconds to get to the line. We're looking Look for 118.1. Oh McEwen God. with the motorbike to work in his favour. <laughs> so I don't know if I beat him. Certainly doesn't feel like it. Wait. <laughs> It's a show of two. It's, yeah, no, In fact, no. it's, a, it's a convincing show of two. Bye-bye. Adios, bye. Adios bye. <laughs> Au revoir. Off his perch. So I'm just rolling up to the finish. I'm trying to check Scotty's uh, body language. The shoulders are somewhat hunched, slouch wiping the brow. I think the boys are telling me it's all good. I see the look on Scotty's face. We had to go that and get Scott. Time. Scott's was 118.1. .1. What do you think you did? Oh, 118.09. No. Uh, it was quite, one, a, quite a bit better than that. 15.74. Okay, I actually honestly expected about 116. Did you? His time, he's the second quickest time. And a guy like Luke Parker, who went to the Junior Worlds last year, he's been retired for seven years. Put his time in perspective, even though you're beating. That's a very good time. I mean, I'm, I'm retired and I'm old, but yeah, Scotty's 60. Really, really <laughs> retired, really old. And uh, couldn't the court was five seconds slower than him. Oh, we, we're going all right. <laughs> well done, mate. Well Not done. bad for old men. Life really does start at 40. It's a, it's a pleasure it, to be beaten by Robbie. It does pay when you enjoy your hobby. So. You're going to race the Noosa Crit again next year? No, I doubt. It's too far off. I've got other stuff to do now. What's next? Just some holidays. Bit of Christmas cheer. I've got to work on uh, moving up to the next size of jersey. <laughs> masters racing. Yeah. Masters <laughs> racing. No, really that's good. where I draw the line. You, know, you will I'd never like race to come masters. out and have a bash now and again, but in elite races. And uh, yeah, no, I've got to draw the line. And step <laughs> up and it just ruined too many people's day. Too many people's day. I think. So you're going to challenge people to come out and see how they compare to your time and stick it up on Strava? Oh, well, I actually checked it out on Strava, but they're yeah, rolling laps, you know, taken yeah. from in the race. And the fast I saw was 111 with a 50k an hour rolling start. So. Pretty tidy times though. Hey mate, yeah. that start was pretty good. The click in, by far the most efficient click in and start we've seen. Yeah. I've stopped at a lot of traffic lights in my time. <laughs> and I still do the right thing now. I stop at the traffic lights, click out most of the time. A lot of time I just track stand, but mm. uh, I've been just putting a lot of thought into the process. So I know it's so important. Yeah, Robbie, <laughs> it's right up there with the green jersey in the Tour de France. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Robbie. Yes. Robbie McKeown, he's Sorry, taken Scotty. the time of Scott McGrory. Not a bad effort. Well, we're delighted to say that Robbie McEwen 
got the better of our very own Scott McGrawing. How's the morale? Deli why are you delighted with that? <laughs> I'm looking forward to speaking to your wife about the future ergo sessions and I'm going to have a permanent CCTV camera down at the hot lap to watch you trying to improve on the time. I, I've been waiting for this moment for three months, Scott, probably just as long as you were training for that moment. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the love, lads. Look, <laughs> eight years retired before I did my hot lap. Hang on. A couple of seconds ago, if you wind the tape back and we're out at the boulevard doing the hot lap, you were seven years retired. <laughs> How retired, long have you been seven retired years. for? Seven, seven years. years before I did it. It, it was a year ago <laughs> that I did my hot lap, wasn't it? Um, I, I'm not sure about this. Look, we know that we love the show Top Gear. Whenever they have the Formula One drivers, you know, or the recently retired ones even, they're on a different board. I think Robbie <laughs> should go onto a different board. The Robbie board. The, his, Robbie, own board. his own board. His yeah. own board. Yeah, he deserves his own board. Uh, it's been an exciting year for us mm. to host the show. It's a nice finish to see Scott McGorry at Beaton. It is, doesn't it happen is. that often. But what's been some of your highlights, or one of your highlights? My, my, one of my highlights is, is the secret pro question that you guys throw in at all, all these interviews. And not so much the, the question itself, but the watching the riders throw it on other riders, right? Mm. And, and I don't think too many of them And what about the know. fact they actually know about the secret pro? That's actually kind of a buzz too, because uh, he hasn't written a post in quite a while, number yeah. one. And number two, I'm surprised that some of these guys actually see the site. So He's in hiding. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, I enjoy that. Yeah, what about for you? Well, for almost the entire year, the hot lap has been my, <laughs> my yeah, it's been my highlight. And I, I hate that segment now. I'm completely over it. Um, so I don't think we'll have it next year. But uh, look, I really enjoyed getting Jens Vogt or Jens Voigt to actually say, "I'm motherfucking Jens Voigt. They can't catch me." That was. Great. He's pretty tough to catch. Forty-two years of age. He's back for another year. For me, it's been what's on your mind, because I'm married now with two young kids, so I don't get to go to the cafe anymore post ride and hear what people are talking about. So it feels like I get to go back to the cafe by reading people's comments on what's on your mind. Yeah. It's been great. I've enjoyed keeping the company each day that we've recorded and put the show together. It's been fun. Yeah. But we do have a lot of people to thank. Of course, here at Northside Wheelers have looked after us in the past. We've been out at the bike gallery, also Total Rush. The team from the sweet shop have taken the show from what it was to what it is. It's been a lot of progress. The guys behind the cameras as well, Logan, Ben and John, wouldn't have been possible without you guys. Country Road for making us look respectable. And of course, you for watching. Looking forward to hearing your feedback and have a good Christmas, safe new year. We'll see you out on the road and let's see what happens next year.